Um, welcome to the candidate debate for the candidates for the San Anselmo Town Council, sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Marin County. Uh, I'm Betsy Cutler, and along with uh, uh, Ann Laser, who is our timekeeper. There are five candidates running for the three openings at the November 7th election, and they are Steve Birdo, Brian Colbert, Kay Coleman, Tom King, and John Wright. Uh, the, the candidates have been invited to make opening statements of two minutes each, and we'll begin in, uh, with, in alphabetical order with Steve Birdo. Thank you. My name is Steve Birdo, and I'm currently the vice chair of the San Anselmo Parks and Recreation Commission. Whether it's playing Memorial Park, hiking a trail with a phenomenal view, or enjoying a family evening downtown, San Anselmo is an extraordinary place to live. We're blessed with a wealth of individual talent committed to our community and our environment and remain proudly and uniquely a small town. Since the moment I moved to San Anselmo, I became acutely involved in our community, first through civic groups like Sustainable San Anselmo and later as a member of the Parks and Recreation Commission. I also served on the Community Facilities Master Plan Advisory Committee and the current Memorial Park Advisory Board. Um, I believe that I have a strong track record in bringing diverse stakeholders together to solve complex issues. With the groups and individuals that have endorsed me, I believe that that shows my ability to bring broad coalitions together to address meaningful issues. I'm very proud to be endorsed by the Marin Professional Firefighters and extremely proud to be in the only candidate endorsed by the Marin Democratic Party, the Sierra Club, the Marin Women's Political Action Committee, and SEIU 10 to 1, which represents our town employees. I have a wealth of passion for San Anselmo and for local government. I work in local government and I believe I could help plot the future for San Anselmo. Thank you. Uh, Brian Colbert. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> My name is Brian Colbert. I've lived in Marin for the past seven years and San Anselmo for the past four years with my wife and seven-year-old daughter who attends the second grade at Wade Thomas Elementary Public School. I'm a graduate of the University of Chicago Law School. I grew up in a small town in Connecticut outside of New York City. I've lived in New York, Chicago, Manhattan Beach, Turkey. I've traveled extensively throughout the US, the Middle East, North Africa, Southeast Asia, and Europe. I'm seasoned. I served on Wall Street for five years as a corporate attorney. I've taught international law in Turkey, and I served on a nonprofit board <coughs> in uh, Alameda County to help children. I'm an entrepreneur. I've served uh, serving and creating several ventures, including my latest, a uh, concierge wellness uh, practice in San Francisco. I'm solid in the community. I'm currently the chair of the San Anselmo Economic Development Committee for the past three years, which has connected me with a variety of stakeholders, including local residents, business owners, and landlords. I've spoken with current council members, including Kay Coleman, John Wright, Tom McInerney, and former council members such as Carla Overberger, Doug Kelly, um, our longtime former town manager, Debbie Stutzman, and our current town manager, Dave Donnery, to get a history and perspective on the town's challenges and opportunities. I've garnered more than 20 endorsements, all from longtime invested stakeholders in San Anselmo, including the Marin Firefighters and the Ross Valley Fire Department. My professional experience demonstrates that I can bring together a variety of stakeholders with different and even conflicting agendas. As a parent of a child in the Ross Valley School District, I understand that I'm connected to the turbulence that's currently roiling San Anselmo and young families in particular. I'm running because I'm engaged uh, in the community and I plan to retire here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Kay Coleman. Hi. I'm Kay Coleman, a candidate for San Anselmo Town Council. I've served two terms as council member and been mayor twice. I've worked hard to be responsive to constituents and represented San Anselmo on many boards and commissions, both local and countywide. In addition, I'm proud to serve as on the executive board of the League of California Cities, the North Bay Division. My husband and I have lived in San Anselmo for 45 years. Our boys were raised and educated in local schools and my community involvement has been extensive. I served as Community Resources Director and Volunteer Coordinator for San Anselmo for almost 10 years. In addition, I taught at Drake High School and founded the Leadership Program, which is flourishing even today. I've been committed to bringing a sense of community to San Anselmo. 
coordinating many activities, picnics on the plaza, country fair day, goblins parade, Creekside queue, beetles in the park, and many others. All these events bring San Anselmo together as a community. Community is who we are and why we live here. But we have work to do and we must do it together. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, uh, Tom King. Uh, thank you for inviting me today, to the, uh, the League of Women Voters. I'm, it's a privilege to be here. Uh, my family has lived in Marin uh, for 15 years. My son and daughter both went through the school districts, uh, Reed School District. Uh, son and daughter both graduated at Redwood. I'm a writer. I'm also heavily involved in the charity world, in the nonprofit world. I founded uh, the, only, the first and only charity ever to offer donors a money-back guarantee. My focus is on accountability and results. And one of the main reasons I'm running here today is to expand democracy. Uh, this is a job, it's one of the most important jobs in the town, in any town, yet it's an unpaid job. Uh, what does that mean? It means only a volunteer can do it, which means only people with a lot of money or a lot of time can apply for the job. I think that leaves out about 70 or 80 percent of the population. Um, I'd like it to be a paid job full-time, no benefits, no pension. I'm very big on one-term limits. Um, I'm very excited to be living in San Anselmo. Um, I've been talking to merchants and residents uh, since the campaign started, since I, since I moved here about uh, close to two years ago. And uh, it's, a, it's a great place and I, I do hope to, uh, to stay here about uh, the next 10, 20 years. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, John Wright. Hi. Uh, my name's John Wright. I'm a 27-year um, resident of San Anselmo. Uh, my wife and I moved out with our three sons from San Francisco um, 27 and a half years ago now. And um, we were, became very active. I became very active immediately in volunteer activities. Uh, the first one was uh, being the pack master of a Cub Scout pack. I was. Uh, sort of shanghai into that in the beginning, but that led me, uh, I met a lot of people that way, and very quickly um, in town, I became very involved with school activities. I spent uh, 17 years on school boards, uh, 15 or five on the Ross Valley School Board in the 90s, and then 12 years on the Tamalpais Union Board, uh, ending in 2013. Uh, all my three sons uh, went to uh, Wade Thomas, uh, White Hill, and Drake, um, so I'm very familiar with parent issues. There's a lot of them around these days on you know, drug use and abuse. Um, I have a, a very, I think, a track record of effective leadership in the community. Uh, I've accomplished a number of things during my tenure as uh, both as town council member for the last four years and on the school board. Uh, notably, uh, the construction of Red Hill Community Park was a project that I was very closely involved with for many years. Um, I was very active uh, four years ago in the passage of Measure D, which has resulted in um, millions or hundreds of thousands at least of uh, additional money for our roads. So uh, we've made substantial progress on uh, infrastructure improvement in San Anselmo, which I think is one of our current big issues. Uh, I have, I think, a very specific track record of accomplishment in that area and I hope to continue to work on those projects over the next uh, three years in our case. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and now we'll have some questions and each uh, person will be uh, having one and a half minutes for the answer. Um, we'll start this time with Brian Colbert and the question for all of you is, uh, what are the main issues facing San Anselmo and the town council in the next four years, three or four years? I think the main issue is, uh, is always infrastructure, uh, the condition of our roads, the condition of our medians, how we continue to fund them and continue to execute and uh, lay the groundwork that's already been done. Uh, the issues that really animate me in this current race are, uh, I'm very concerned about economic vitality, what the town can do to create a, a solid economic foundation to uh, acquire and uh, retain and support businesses uh, in San Anselmo. I'm very concerned about uh, maintaining our commitment to open space and engaging in a long-term vision for neighborhood parks that allow for more green space and spontaneous community gatherings. 
I'm very concerned about pedestrian and traffic safety for all our residents, particularly our seniors and our children as they come to and from school. I'm very concerned uh, and believe we need to execute on tangible flood mitigation. Uh, there's a palpable concern in the town about there's been a lot of talk and I think we're finally uh, making some moves. I think there's an interesting intersection between flood mitigation and economic vitality downtown. And finally, I think we need to continue to explore technology <coughs> and figure out how we as a town council and a community can connect better in ways uh, that are more meaningful to people. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. There's some definite, definite areas in San Anselmo that we're looking at. Number one, of course, is financial stability. It's interesting to know that San Anselmo was ahead of many jurisdictions in the county in, uh, in the tiered system for pension retirement. And we've done very well with that. And I know that other jurisdictions are at 19%, according to the grand jury report, and San Anselmo's at 2% of, mm. their, of the uh, Pension Reform Act. That pension is, is a big thing because it's financial stability. In addition, our infrastructure, we have, <clears throat> we have a new PCI that's coming out uh, next year, but we've, we've made it our focus to preserve our assets. We do the good things, and then the things that are more difficult We'll take those on as it happens. We're replacing pipes in just an, an incredible way and repairing our streets. This is to make sure that we have a safe transit for everybody who's riding a bike to school or bicyclists are coming through town. And then, of course, flood mitigation. It's a real interchange between the business community and I've been through the floods of 82 and 05 in a very active way. And I know the difficulties that that brings to families who live around there. It's not just businesses, but there are 500, 800 families around there that flood. And so we really have to address that, but we'll do it piece by piece. Thank you. Thank you. Tom King? Uh, thank you. Uh, and thanks, Kay, for that. I, I am one of the families in the flood zone. I live downtown. Uh, the flood is a... Is a is a very serious issue. Um, I don't know why it hasn't been solved. It's a hundred year problem. Um, what I would do, I have an extensive background in fundraising and grant writing. Uh, I would try to raise grants, uh, serious grants, millions of dollars to get national and international leaders on board and look at this as a comprehensive project. Um, there are very, there are low-lying countries like Japan, the Netherlands, uh, they can focus on this. Um, uh, they've got cutting-edge technology in terms of flood mitigation and flood prevention. I think the most important issue facing the town is one that's not addressed. In fact, it's not on my website. It's not on my literature. I don't know if it's in any other candidate's literature. And that has to do with affordability, affordable housing specifically. The reason I didn't include it on my own website is because I, I simply don't believe uh, people in Marin in general are committed towards this goal of affordable housing. Um, I'd like to see more of it. Um, I'm, I believe I'm the only renter on the panel and I think renters need a little more respect whether they're, uh, they're renting as a merchant or renting residentially. I'd also like a ban on GMOs. I think that's very critical. I'd like the fluoride taken out of our water and a ban on smoking. Uh, Marin talks about environmental concerns and I think we need to do a better job on that. Thank you. Uh, John Wright. Thank you. Um, I agree with uh, many of the things that uh, some of the candidates have said, particularly about infrastructure. Um, I, think if, when, I think when people come to the town, uh, they're expecting the roads to be um, uh, not broken up and uh, no potholes, medians to be attractive, and parks to be um, playable and not dangerous. Um, I think we have a couple of big challenges right now. Um, financially with respect to uh, Memorial Park, which is a project that a number of us have been involved with to get a, a master plan put together. Uh, that's going to require um, significant financial input. Uh, maybe Mr. King's grant sources would help in that respect because we certainly need to do a lot of work there. Um, I, I think uh, I agree on downtown revitalization. There's work to be done there. I'm also on the uh, Economic Development Commission with, uh, with Brian. And uh, we've been talking about some very specific, we have a very specific action plan that I think is going to make a difference uh, over time. 
Um, another issue not mentioned here, but I think it's important to parents in the community, is the issue of uh, retail marijuana sales. That's actually in front of us um, right now, and we'll have to make some decisions in the next uh, six months uh, as to what level of marijuana uh, retail activity that we will allow. I know a lot of parents are concerned about that, and uh, as a parent, I, uh, I have significant concerns uh, about that issue. Thank you. Steve Birdo. Yeah, in terms of the most important issues facing San Anselmo right now, infrastructure is a big one. We need to be able to plan for the future of our roads and our facilities. Uh, we have dated infrastructure and we need to have a plan for the future. Flooding, flooding is so important because it has so many other impacts on the town. We need to make meaningful progress on flood mitigation because that flows into economic vitality. We can't have a thriving downtown if there's always a threat of flooding. My other big issue is public safety. With the threat of fire and the threat of flooding, we need to make sure that our public safety providers have the tools they need to keep us safe. And finally, quality of life issues, um, like recreational cannabis in our community, and like green space in our community, and ensuring that we have a collaborative community. Those are all huge issues that the next town council will need to address, and I would relish the opportunity to be a part of that town council. Thank you. Uh, for our next question, um, <clears throat> many local governments have entered into consolidation of services to save money and uh, coordinate these services. And I wonder um, w which uh, consolidations San Anselmo has entered into and should you be doing more of it and how are they working? And we'll start with Kay Coleman. Well, that was a very exciting time. Um, as you know, San Anselmo <clears throat> consolidated its police departments with Corte Madera and Larkspur, and we now have the Central Marin Police. And uh, it's worked out really well. We still have a presence in San Anselmo, and the, the combination has allowed us to have good backup, have good participation. And so that, it, it took a long time. I was on the council and I helped do that. Uh, it took a long time to bring it together and to get everybody to relax and, and know that it was going to work. In addition, of course, we are, we are consolidated in the fire departments with Fairfax, Sleepy Hollow, and we do some work with the Ross Fire Department as well. And that works. We've got backup. We have, we have a consolidation of services as to Who's, who's serving what, and, and I'm very proud of the fact that we've done that, and we, it's the going way, and we'll have to look at it further, everybody will have to look at it. So I'm proud of what we've done in, we've done in San Anselmo, thanks. Thank you, Tom King. Uh, thank you, uh, yes, I, I recently met with both the acting chief, acting fire chief, and the uh, uh, chief of police, Chief Norton, recently to talk about this main issue. Uh, both are on board, uh, both support the consolidation efforts. I, I support the fire consolidation 100%. I think it was a, ter a terrific uh, decision, and I commend you know, Kay and others who were involved in that. Uh, with regard to the police, I think I need to do a little more research in terms of the numbers and the budgets um, to see how much money we really are saving. Uh, in Ross, they have their own police department, uh, and there's a special fee that people pay. I think, I think they pay about $800,000 total in aggregate on that. Um, I, I kind of like the local feel of a police department. Um, so I, I, again, I need to do a little more research in terms of how much we're savings, but um, uh, I, my, my, I'm leaning towards a local police force. Um, other areas we can perhaps consider consolidation is uh, in recreation. I'd like to partner more with Ross on many issues. They have a tremendous recreation department. It brings in, I, I think, close to 1.5 million for Ross. Uh, we can do a much better job in that area on our own, um, but I think in the, in, in the meantime, perhaps we can um, consider some consolidation efforts. Uh, many families are uh, active in terms of recreation, especially school-age families. Thank you. Uh, John Wright? Hi. Um, yes, I think we have a, a track record of successful consolidation in San Anselmo. Um, as Kay mentioned, uh, both with fire and police. Um, I sit on the police council. I've been on there for four years and have 
studied their budget very closely. Uh, we've saved several hundred thousand dollars a year, if not more, from that consolidation. So I, I don't, to go back to a local department, I just don't think would be prudent uh, under, by any measure. We're getting uh, excellent policing. We have, we still have a substation in town. Uh, many of the same police officers are part of Central Marin. Um, with respect to recreation, um, we, we, our recreation department actually makes money. Um, it, it does provide services for people. Fairfax people use it quite a lot because their town is not quite as active. Um, I would support looking at other opportunities, not so much for consolidation, but really what we would call shared services. That was something that um, in the 17 years I spent on school boards, there was quite a bit of uh, activity in that area. Uh, you can do things kind of behind the scenes without reducing the direct service that uh, people get uh, from the towns by sharing a lot of services behind the scenes. Um, I'd like to do more of that in areas like public works and planning. Uh, we have great staff, but they tend to be overworked, and I think some economies of scale could be obtained by doing some shared services, I think, in both of those areas. But we've got a good track record so far. Thank you. Uh, Steve Berto? Yeah. I am a big supporter of the consolidation of the police departments and joining the Central Marin Police Authority. We, ex we saw great cost savings from that, and I think now at the level we're in, um, we've, we've got that in, we're in there, and we are, now it's a matter of just taking the next step to find better ways of community policing. As I'm going around and talking to people in the neighborhoods and on the doors, um, they're very happy with their police services, but now it's time to discuss how we could augment that with better community policing. With regards to our fire services, I think the Ross Valley uh, Fire District is one of the most successful um, in Marin. We have some of the hardest working firefighters and the people keeping us safe. Um, I agree with John that our uh, recreation department is a great model for success, and, and not just for success, but, but for collaboration. When you look at our recreation programs, we have people coming in from all out the Ross Valley. We have people coming in from West Marin to utilize our gymnastics programs, our youth soccer programs. We do an amazing job of providing those services for our community, and I'm very interested in ways that we could um, expand those programs. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Brian? Yeah, so I'm a, I'm a big fan of uh, consolidation and, and shared services, just to repeat some of the remarks that have already been made. I, too, have spoken with the leaders at the police department and the fire department, and uh, they're incredibly competent, hardworking people. And um, just to reiterate again, the people in San Anselmo are, are incredibly happy with, with the level of service um, and engagement. There's always opportunities for greater engagement, um, but I think everyone knows that and is working toward that. As I said in my opening statement, my daughter is seven years old, and she participates in a wide variety of programs at the rec center. And uh, it's an incredible set of programs. And I know it's, it's a real community builder, not just within San Anselmo, but as Steve said, throughout all of Marin, people come from all over the Ross Valley and outside to participate in a wide variety of programs year round. And I have great respect for the people that run the programs um, administratively and great respect for the coaches and parent volunteers because it really does take a community to make programs like that work. Thank you. Thank you. I play Mahjong. <laughs> and for our next question, um, traffic and parking are issues that um, all local governments in the county are facing. Um, how difficult are they in San Anselmo? And we'll start with Tom. Well, I, I think traffic's a critical issue. Uh, it's, it's, we can't just go out to Sir Francis Drake with a clipboard and count cars. It's, we need to look at the origin of the problem. And the origin starts, I think, in San Francisco. Again, we're back to housing. Um, affordable housing is, is critical. Um, San Francisco, I don't know why. I, I lived there 20 years. Um, I know the city quite well. And they can do a lot more building of housing. They're, they're, San Francisco is the, is the city recruiting businesses, recruiting individuals and employees. And many of these employees are coming, uh, coming to Marin to live. Um, so that, that's one issue. Uh, another issue on traffic would be, um, uh, you know, public transportation expansion. Um, I ride the bus. Um, the commuter bus is excellent in the morning. Uh, in the, in the uh, late afternoon, it does take a while. But I think more options uh, public transportation-wise, we could look at, 
you know, the, the smart train took, I think, 20 years to actually get here. And when it, when it got here, it, it, it doesn't seem all that intellectual, to be honest. I don't know if they use the word smart. I mean, it's not high tech. It's not cutting edge in terms of like what's going on in Japan and Europe. Um, I think they could have done a much better job with the amount of money that has been spent and will, will continue to be spent there. But again, we have to look at affordability. We have to look at what's going on in San Francisco, um, you know, promote, uh, pr uh, promote public transportation options and more feasibility of it. Thank you. John? Sure. Um, well, I think these are, these are both challenging issues. I think the question is, to me, um, you know, what can you do at a town council level about either of those issues? Um, there, are some, there are a few things, and there, there are things that we are doing, and I've been involved in working on them, uh, with respect to parking uh, through the Economic Development Committee that uh, Brian chairs. We are encouraging the town, and the town has agreed this year to do a, a, a real thorough parking study so we can uh, really identify, you know, what the, where the parking resources are downtown. There's a lot. One one problem is people don't know where parking is, and so that that's part of the challenge. And uh, we have a, a, a proposal to do a, a signage program that would make it more apparent where signing where, where parking exists. So uh, that that's one concrete solution that we're working on that I've been involved with uh, with respect to. Traffic, um, I think there, here there are a few things. It's harder for small town, town, town councils to do that because there's so many macro issues, as, as Tom referred to. One specific thing that I have been involved with is the yellow school, school bus program. I've been on the committee that it works with the Ross Valley School District and Fairfax, and we have given money actually to help support a school bus program uh, out to White Hill School that has measurably reduced uh, traffic. So there's some concrete things that we've done. I've been involved in working on those things. I do agree that more public transit options would be appropriate and would support more county level support uh, for that through uh, enhanced funding for, pu for public transit. Thank you. Uh, Steve Birdo. Yeah, with regards to traffic, there are a few issues that the town council can address. Um, one of them would be the condition of our roads. A lot of times uh, when you're commuting out of San Anselmo in the morning or coming back in the evening, um, there'll be road construction projects. Um, so those are necessary projects and, and we need to do them. And I personally think that the town does a good job of noticing uh, the residents. However, um, we could always look at ways that we could better plot for and plan those projects. Um, another big issue that I always hear about, um, particularly in my neighborhood, is the speed of traffic down Sir Francis Drake. I think um, mitigating the hazard of, of speed uh, in on our roads and in our community, uh, especially with all the young families and children that we have, that's very important. Um, I, I agree that I think the parking study is a good step um, towards really taking an evaluation of what we have in our community in terms of parking resources. But I'll also give uh, kudos to our local planning commission who have done a very thoughtful job um, when new developments are coming into town or new additions are being put onto houses for second units or whatnot. They've been taking a very, very thoughtful approach to how we plan parking in, a, in our community. So I'd like to see them continue with that. And as a town council member, I would support them in doing that. Thank you, uh, Brian. Yeah, parking and traffic are vexing issues, and I think you, one needs to take a, a short and a long-term look. As John said before, uh, I've worked with him um, in my role as chair on the EDC, and we've really tried to figure out what are some tangible, executable steps that the town can do to, one, be able to sort of quantify what the problem is and then measure our progress. So I, I think the parking study and our, our signage plan are strong steps uh, to, one, uh, help the merchants, and two, help local residents um, get around San Anselmo. Longer term, I think we're facing sort of a demographic traffic trend in that San Francisco, probably for the foreseeable future, will continue to be an, an attractor of people. And as uh, young people have families, they're going to want to move out to the cities, in large part drawn because of our excellent public schools and close location. So I think we really need to sort of think about what will transportation look like in seven to 10 years from now? Um, is building something like uh, more parking spaces really necessary when in fact driverless cars may in fact become prevalent? So I, I think that um, particularly as an entrepreneur, I have the, the sense and the ability to sort of say, well, listen to the community to address their short-term problems and also engage them in a long-term vision so that we're uh, meeting our future challenges. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, traffic and parking. 
they've always been two big problems. But we're doing small things to help. As John said, we have the, the yellow bus program, which is helping to transport kids to school and get parents off the road at the time when people are commuting. We've also instituted, um, through our roads program, bicycle lanes for the kids to get faster and more, and more safely to school. And that's really been an important thing that we've done. Uh, in addition, the, one of the things that nobody really addresses is that, or, and because we can't, is the fact that Sir Francis Drake is designated as a highway. So there's only so much that we can do to reduce that traffic, to reduce the speed on Sir Francis Drake. We can ask people to slow down voluntarily, but we've done study after study through the police department as to what that, uh, what that measure would be, how much, how fast people could go. So parking downtown, as a man said to me, I went to the League of California Cities, and someone stood up and said, we have a problem with parking downtown. And the man said, if you have a problem with parking downtown, you don't have a problem. So what he was implying was that if you've got a lot of people downtown, that's, that's a good thing. So we just need to learn how to advertise it more and encourage the merchants to park farther away so that those places are available for people who are shopping downtown. Thanks. Thank you. Um, every discussion of local government finances in the recent years eventually gets around to discussing the condition of, the, of your town's pension system. Uh, how has that been addressed in San Anselmo? Uh, and we'll start with John Wright. Hi. Um, well, I think as Kay might have mentioned earlier, uh, I think San Anselmo has been somewhat at the forefront of taking uh, pretty aggressive action by instituting a number of years ago a, a two-tier program. Uh, consequently, the pension costs in San Anselmo, I think, are, are quite, quite considerably moderated compared to a lot of the other local towns, and our budget has not been impacted nearly as much. Uh, one aspect of, of uh, employee benefits or retirement benefits that we've done particularly well on is we have a, a capped uh, health care benefit. It's been capped for a number of years, and so we've achieved quite a few uh, savings there. Uh, we're, we're very mindful of uh, the pension issues, and in fact, we have a study, we authorized a study, we, we asked the finance director and the town manager to do a study that we're going to hear about this fall, uh, on other measures, what additional measures can we take to further reduce uh, pension liability, including uh, pension bonds, so-called, which is a way of, of reducing the ultimate amount of uh, ongoing liability. And there's other techniques that may be out there that can be uh, achieved without necessarily reducing the level of benefit to the uh, retiree. Uh, there can still be fiscal savings. So we're, we're doing, we've done a lot and we're continuing to work on that issue uh, quite actively. Thank you. Steve? Yeah, so I think San Anselmo's in a pretty good position relatively um, with regards to the pension situation. Our pension costs are sustainable. Um, we were one of the first municipalities in Marin to really bring our pensions into balance. Um, and I look forward to the upcoming pension study to see what other fiscal savings we could uh, find through there. However, I, I would like to mention, I think as a public employee myself, I think it's important that we have pensions um, for our public employees. We need to, at the local government level in particular, be able to attract skilled workers into our local governments. Uh, local government is where the rubber hits the road. Um, more, you have more impacts from local government on your life every single day than you do from the federal or the state government. Um, so we need to make sure that the people working for our local governments are able to have benefits that would attract them to come from the private sector or otherwise uh, uh, take a job in the, in the public sector when they otherwise wouldn't. So I think it's important that we continue to keep our pension costs sustainable while also having a good pension program and benefits program to attract skills, skilled workers to San Anselmo. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Brian Colbert. Yeah, so I, uh, I support and applaud the efforts of uh, the previous town councils um, with uh, managing San Anselmo's pension liability. I mean, it's, it's a challenge vexing every city and municipality in this country right now. And so far, we've done a pretty good job, but uh, challenges continue to arise. I think the big challenge um, with regarding to pensions is engaging the community 
and getting them to recognize the work that has been done and the work that will need to continue to be done. Because while I continue to support uh, the promises that have been made, I think we need to have a continuing dialogue with current and future employees and say, look, there may have to be a conversation about what future benefits look like. And I think that will be a challenging and difficult conversation. But the more town council is able to engage all the stakeholders, including residents and public employees, the more fruitful and less contentious that we can uh, be. Thank you. Thank you. OK. Well, Senate Selmo has the greatest employees of any place, any jurisdiction in the county. We have absolutely the best. The first tier one was 2.7% at 55. And then in 09, we went to tier two, in which the retirement age was 2% at 55. <clears throat> then in 2013, we adopted PEPRA, which is the Public Employees Pension and Reform Act. And it's 2% at 62. This has taken an incredible amount of conversation, working together, everybody realizing that we want the very best for our employees and we want to attract great employees. So that's always the problem. But we have, we've just had the most wonderful conversations and understandings between employees and, and the town. And we wish we could, always wish we could do more. Always. But we're doing what we can. So thank you. Thank you. Tom? Well, San Anselmo is on the right track regarding pension reform and pension liability issues. However, I'm much more concerned with the bigger picture, and that's the state of California. Uh, it's in much more serious trouble. We're a small town in a very large state, fifth or sixth largest economy in the world, and California as a whole is in uh, quite, quite serious issues with regard to pension liabilities. Uh, that said, I believe in pensions. Um, very, you know, it's a shame that only the public sector is, seems to be getting pensions today. Um, I'd like to see every company offer pensions. Uh, but once again, uh, we're all in this together, every employee. And I don't, you know, contracts are great in the, in the real world. Things happen, whether it's a marriage contract that ends sadly or, uh, you know, a, another business contract or people get fired or laid off, what have you, for no reason of their, you know, no fault of their own. Um, things unfortunately happen. So, you know, we need to, we need to look at this realistically. Uh, I would be in favor of more, more cuts in terms of pension cuts. And um, uh, again, this, but I, I do think it's a, we're looking at it uh, from a small perspective uh, in a large state that has much, much larger issues. Thank you. Uh, affordable housing is an issue for the towns and cities uh, and counties in the, in the Bay Area. Um, would you support uh, building any affordable housing uh, similar to uh, Habitat for Humanity uh, type of units uh, in San Anselmo? And if so, where in the town uh, would, would they fit? Um, and we'll start with Steve. So I'm very much in favor of Habitat for Humanity, sweat equity type housing. Um, I think it's in, it's a it's an innovative model that's been around for quite some time now and is proven very very successful. Um, the the issue in San Anselmo where it comes to affordable housing is the limit on the actual space where you could build. So we need to be very strategic about how we address the affordable housing issue in San Anselmo. Um, I think, you know, looking strategically at new developments, uh, where and when they are right to have the appropriate um, affordable housing designations, whether that be 20% or greater, that's always a good model. Um, but we need to work together as a community to identify those locations. There are a number of uh, parcels and projects coming up over the next few years that could be ideal uh, for affordable housing. But first and foremost, there needs to be a desire in our community to be an inclusive community. And that takes going out there, being collaborative, and bringing people together to address the needs of the community and identify how, how that would look and how it would feel if we do it. Um, and I'm, I'm committed to going out and having those conversations um, to ensure that we have a very inclusive community um, for all for people from of all incomes and all walks of life. Thank you, Brian. So the, the Habitat for Humanity is an interesting model, but I think when you start talking about affordable housing in San Anselmo, I think it's really hard to actually define what people are talking about. 
So I, I've been talking to folks since January, and the two concerns I hear most frequently are, I wish my children could afford to live close to me, and what about the seniors in our community? And I think that's the, the real challenging, vexing problem that we have, is how do we maintain those community ties? And you know, we're, we're part of the, the Bay Area, which is incredibly expensive. I think uh, the town has done some really interesting things with regards to in-law and second units. I think there's a number of spaces in town which might be suitable for multi-unit housing, which may lower the price point for young families or seniors. But I think the challenge is how can the town partner and work with developers to ensure that those units uh, reflect the desires and needs of the community while serving everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. It's interesting, this term affordable housing. As a senior, I know that we've been in our house for 45 years, and I say to myself, where can we afford to go? And I say that about my children, too. What can they afford to buy? At the League of California Cities convention, which I recently attended, there are several, several bills that have been discussed and on, are on the governor's desk. But San Anselmo is 5,000 households, 12,000 people. And each time something comes up, we say to ourselves, who can live there? What is affordable? What's affordable for the people who want to live in San Anselmo? We want people of all income levels to be able to live in San Anselmo. Um, the innovative housing that they're doing in Fairfax is a, is a great example. Can we do that in San Anselmo? Where would we put it? That's, those are big questions, and I know that we have to deal with them, and I know that there are people who can't afford to live in San Anselmo. What is affordable housing? We all have to think about that. Thanks. Thank you. Tom? Well, the question specifically was on Habitat for Humanity. Uh, yes, I support that, but that's really a drop in the bucket. Uh, they, they build homes. Um, so we need, we need to think large scale. We need to think in terms of apartment complexes. Uh, what I would be in favor of, affordable housing is an interesting term because there's sort of two definitions of it. <clears throat> Pardon me. Uh, you can put capitali capitalized letters or, or lowercase. Uh, with capitalized letters, it's usually government housing, and the government decides who gets to live there, often by a lottery. I don't think that's fair. Um, I, would be, I would support senior housing with strict requirements. The seniors live, have, have lived here in San Anselmo at least 10 years, perhaps 15 or 20. Um, I think that's fair uh, for seniors and disabled. Uh, but I would also like to uh, you know, go beyond the traditional model of government affordable housing and look more of a public-private partnership. I'd like to see apartments built uh, that are very small square footage. So the landlords and owners are getting their, their price per square foot and many more people can afford to live here. Um, again, I'm the only renter here, so this is a huge issue with me. Thank you. Uh, John? Yeah, um, well, I certainly agree that uh, affordable housing is a, is a major problem. Um, I, I see it from a couple perspectives, several perspectives. Um, my own children can't really afford to live in the area, so there's that. Um, public service workers, I think, is a big issue. Uh, we see that with, uh, I saw that in the school district the time that I spent there. We see it with uh, police and fire. Many of the public service uh, workers can't afford to live here, and they have to come in from well outside the community. Um, seniors and, and others, um, I, I absolutely support the goal of uh, having an inclusive community. The question, I think, is what can we actually do, again, in a small town, because it's, we're, we're in the middle of, of, of macro issues that we don't have a lot of control over. Um, we have been making some incremental progress with uh, the accessory unit uh, the dwelling regulations that have been relatively liberalized. We're beginning to see a few multi-family projects in San Anselmo that have a small amount of affordable housing with them. Um, I think there's a couple, there, we don't have a lot of places to build in San Anselmo. Um, one interesting area I think would be the lower part of San Anselmo Avenue down near the post office. There's some flat land that has got mostly post office parking at this point. I, I, would, I would be interested in seeing some project come forward. but. There's not a lot we can do, uh, given all the macro forces that are out there, other than some of the incremental things that we've been doing, and we're making some progress. 
Thank you. Um, I'd like to ask about the small businesses in San Anselmo. How are the small businesses doing, and are there ways that the council could uh, improve the business climate for, the, for your town? Uh, and we'll start with Brian. Yeah, well, as chair of the San An good place to begin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> as chair of the San Anselmo Economic Development Committee for the past three years, I am deeply steeped in the issues, challenges, and frankly, opportunities uh, of the small business community. Uh, doing small business uh, in this country has been a challenge since the 1960s, first with the advent of the mall and now with the internet. But I, I think it's also been an opportunity for them to provide interesting experiences and restaurants are in fact the new retail. So under my leadership and partnership with John and other members of the community, we've been basically trying to figure out what can the town do from a framework pers perspective to allow those kind of merchants with business plans that are well capitalized, uh, that are willing to engage with their consumers, both local residents and tourists, to make their businesses successful. So to that end, over the past three years, we've conducted a number of quantitative surveys, a business retention, merchant survey, consumer survey, a merchant forum, to really figure out what the challenges are. And one of the things that we're doing right now is we're having a marketing seminar which because we've heard from local businesses, they have challenges marketing. So the town has stepped forward and provided space and funding and allows merchants to come in, take that information, take it back to their businesses. So I think, uh, I think we're on a, a really good upswing uh, in spite of the challenges that the, the businesses are currently facing. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I served on the Economic Development Committee when it first started, and many of the issues are still the same the small businesses and how can they survive and how can they all come together and act as one unit. But what I am seeing and I'm sensing, I think because I've lived in town so long, I'm sensing a real resurgence of desire to come together as a community of businesses and a desire to help one another and to communicate. And And the EDC has done a great job with their survey. It's, it's incredibly complete and people participated very well in it. Uh, I think the small town businesses in San Anselmo will have great support from the merchants, I mean, great support from the, from the town and from the, from the people who live there. As, rest, as Brian said, we're becoming known as a restaurant city, and uh, that's not a bad thing. We all, it used to be an antiques capital, and now we're getting more and more restaurants and more people coming there. But, I sense with Brian that, that there's a real resurgence of, of things that are happening new, and there are new merchants, and, and as, as they would say, new blood. But there's some real positive energy downtown, and, uh, and I hope to see that continue. Thanks. Thank you. Tom King? Well, the first thing we can do is talk to the merchants. Uh, that's what I've done for the past few weeks, um, literally going door to door downtown. I live downtown, right on Tunstead. Um, they're concerned. Um, I, 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 sense, I sense a lot of concern. Um, the rents are very high. Um, San Anselmo is not Tiburon or Sausalito. They're, they're concerned that, you know, why the rents are so high. I don't know what the town council can do about that per se. Perhaps we can think about some type, uh, some type of um, you know, rent control for commercial, you know, commercial tenants. So at least they can have in their budgeting plan that the rent will not go up maybe more than two or three percent or whatever X percent after the lease is up. That would help. But uh, you know, the main thing is in terms, of, in terms of downtown, downtown is the pulse of a city, of a town. And so we need to do everything we can to save it and to expand it. And if it turns into restaurant row, as, as what we've heard you know, through other candidates here, that would be fine too. I'd like to see more cafes. I'd like to see extended hours. I think we can put street lighting on, uh, lighting on our trees. We could do improvements for medians. We can do sidewalk improvements. Uh, we can also do, because th th this topic relates to just about every question we've had today. We can do more building, so more people are in town, downtown shopping. And we can put a parking structure, a parking garage, next to, um, behind Taco Jane's and adjacent to Imagination Park, which is where I go every night. <laughs> and uh, I, Santa Monica did a terrific job with their parking structure, and I think we can do likewise. Thank you. Thank you. Um, 
Yeah, I think a number of the topics have been uh, addressed uh, already by the other speakers. Um, I have, I've have been serving with Brian um, on the EDC. Uh, Kay was on that before, and I want to commend Brian for his uh, great leadership of the EDC because I think we, we have, there is an action plan, and the question has always been, you know, what, what can the town do as a town to try to deal with some of these issues? There are a lot of macro issues that are beyond our control. You know, we didn't, we didn't create Amazon. You know, we didn't, there are things that are affecting retail, I think, regardless. Uh, and I think the things that we are specifically working on now, um, parking study, uh, signage program, um, the seminars that we're, we partnered with the Small Business Administration, you know, to do that. Uh, and, and you know, streamlining the permitting process for new businesses. And so I think we've done a lot concretely to uh, create a, a very favorable framework. Um, I think another thing, frankly, that discourages downtown growth is flood control. Um, that we don't, you know, we haven't, we haven't really addressed flood control. There's a, there's a plan, which I support, but it's a very, very slow process that, that, that generates um, a tremendous amount of, I would say, very localized opposition and makes it very hard to kind of get that moving forward. But I, I think I, I've heard from a number of merchants that you know, they're not going to put something in sand and summer because they don't know what's going to happen the next time around with the flood. So I think that's kind of a, an elephant in a room regarding downtown business. Thank you. Steve Burgo. I agree that the Town Economic Committee's action plan is a great first step, um, but we cannot ignore, when we talk about supporting small businesses, one of the largest growing sectors within the small business community, and those are businesses that are being operated out of people's homes. Um, we've seen a large uh, amount of growth there, particularly in San Anselmo in that regard, and the Town Council will be able to do things to help support those business owners. Um, I, I agree with John. I think, you know, when we talk about downtown, um, we have to address flooding if we're going to have sus a sustainable downtown economy. Um, while there is a lot of economic resurgency going on right now, we've seen this before. We've seen the businesses come in, go for a few years and, and then go out. And that's not conducive to a sustainable economic community. We need to address flood reform in a very meaningful way. And, and I'm proud of the steps that the county took this week to do that, but, but that is going to be a little more slow moving. Um, we need to do the, the things in San Anselmo that may address the 10-year flood or the 25-year flood event um, to give our business owners downtown the confidence that they're not going to have to close their doors in the winter. Um, restaurants are great, but they don't make money when they're closed. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, council members don't um, just serve their town. They sit on committees, commissions, task force, forces, and coalitions that are county, regional, state, and uh, even national level. Um, which of these assignments uh, uh, do you think would work best for you um, should you be elected or re-elected? Uh, we'll start with Kay. I, um, I serve on a, on a variety of commissions. One of the ones that I really have enjoyed is the North Bay Division of the League of California Cities. When I go to those conferences and I sit at a table with Camarillo and uh, Menlo Park and all the small towns and the large towns, and we sit there and we talk about what are you doing about traffic or what are you doing about fire? What are you doing about all these different things? That I love. I also serve on the um, what is called the um, the community development block grant CDBG, which m moves the grants out from HUD <coughs> and transfers the money from HUD to projects within our district. We all agreed the other night when we came together that it was our favorite thing to do because it looks like even though the government is cutting back on the money we can take that money and move it. And then, of course, uh, I like serving on the, on the boards and commissions that, that I've served on. I've been on, the, I've been on the fire board. I've been very active with the, with the Downtown Merchants Association. So uh, every single one of them I'm, I feel very strongly about doing. Thanks. Thank you. Tom King. Well, I'm the, I'm the newcomer here. So I haven't sat on a commission or board uh, here, in, here in San Anselmo, that is. 
Um, my strength, again, would be with finance and grant writing, uh, grants and contracts. Um, I'm very good, very good cutting through bureaucracy. Um, you know, we heard about conferences and seminars. Um, I'd like to see some more webinars, um, you know, uh, to save some money from the town budget. Um, but really the key for me, like I mentioned in my opening statement about expanding democracy, is one-term limits. Um, we would be the only uh, jurisdiction in the country to do that. This is a four-year appointment. I think four years is a long time. In the private sector, it's a lifetime. It could be five jobs and two different careers. Um, I think there'll be a whole breed of new, of new applicant, people with uh, very hardworking uh, dedication, people who know how to cut, you know, get through, get things done, a um, more, little more aggressive in terms of number of phone calls, number of meetings, and focused on accountability and results. I think the town has done a, a, an excellent job in that area, but I think there's always room for improvement. Um, so my focus really would be on getting grant money to the town of San Anselmo. Thank you. John Wright. Right. Well, I want to make a couple of points. Um, I, I think, first of all, to, uh, be, to actually be effective on these regional bodies, um, you need to be doing it for a number of years. Um, a, our, this current term, of course, which is three years because of the state law, I think to have a, have a, have a three-year term, you'd never get anything done because you wouldn't learn anything. Um, what I've been, I want to mention two things that I've specifically been involved, have been involved with. Um, one is the, the flood issue. I'm, I'm chair of our town flood committee. I'm interested in being involved in the Flood Zone 9 Advisory Committee, which is uh, going to be our, our representative, Tom McInerney, who's not running, is, has been the rep to that, and that's something I'd like to continue to pursue because I've been spending a lot of time studying that issue. I'm also particularly proud of another thing I've been working on with uh, Fairfax and now Corte Madera and uh, Larkspur, and that is the uh, Healthy Community Collaborative. It's now called the Coalition Connection, which is a a group of people, um, elected officials and others, that are dealing with uh, changing community norms around uh, alcohol and drug abuse. And this is a very big issue, I think, with parents and uh, young children, um, the high school kids in particular. We have very high rates of binge drinking and marijuana use in the high schools. And so I, th I think I've been very effective in that realm. We just got a $125,000 a year grant from the federal government to uh, continue to work on that. So I think there's some really, I've been involved in some, what I think have been effective collaboration with local communities that I'd like to continue with. Thank you, uh, Steve Burgo. So I work in public safety. I'm a public information officer, a communications officer for the public safety departments in Contra Costa County. So naturally, I would gravitate towards the uh, fire boards and the police authority boards. I would want to be on there um, to bring my experience um, and, and my uh, knowledge in terms of public safety to those boards. Um, also, as uh, somebody who's very concerned about our public safety, sitting on the Flood Zone 9 Advisory Board would be something I'd be very much interested in, as well as the Transportation Authority of Marin. I think um, looking at ways to address our traffic issues from a regional perspective, um, and, and most importantly, finding ways to implement better, smarter public transportation. I think that, particularly on the east-west corridor going you know, through San Anselmo, um, that's something where if we're going to get cars off the road, that's going to be an area where we could mostly uh, move the ball down the field, so to say. So I, I would be, those are the boards that I think that I could bring a lot of uh, experience and skills to and would be happy to serve on. Thank you. Uh, Brian? So I think there's uh, two natural boards that I'd be a, a natural fit for or council liaison. The first is uh, obviously the San Antonio Economic Development Committee. Uh, as chair, I'd be certainly interested in continuing to, to partner with them as a council liaison. Uh, the town council also has a liaison to the Ross Valley School District. And as uh, I would hope to be on council, I'd be the only member of council with a school-aged child and with the child in the district. I think that would, that would be a, a natural fit. I, I have an interest in both the administration and what's going on in the classroom. I'm a volunteer myself. I have an interest in uh, Flood Zone 9 because I think a lot of the flood mitigation measures downtown could actually have some very interesting economic uh, effects aside uh, just from solely flood mitigation effects. And um, I certainly respect John's earlier comments about being on a, a board and having to be on it for a long time. 
But I've attended some ABAG conferences uh, devoted to economic development in other downtowns. And while I was not necessarily in a position to add a great deal, I was actually able to learn an incredible amount. So um, I would be very interested. I, I know that Kay goes to a lot of League of Cities uh, meetings. And one of the things I've seen to do personally in conversation or council meetings is bring back those ideas. And um, I'm certainly not trying to push Kay out of the way, but I got to tell you, they sound incredibly interesting and a real way to- Always room for more. <laughs> and just a, a way to really leverage what other communities are doing and then synthesize that back into San Anselmo. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I wonder if you could describe how you feel the uh, San Anselmo's financial uh, condition is right now. Uh, and we'll start with Tom King. Uh, uh, well, it, it, are you asking in a general sense, or are you asking? Uh, yes. Is, okay. Well, I think I think we're doing well. I think I think we have a you know an excellent group of people on the town council. There's always room for improvement. Again, I think the downtown needs to improve. Um, we can do a lot of things better in terms of you know helping our downtown merchants. Um, in terms of bringing in money to a town, there's only limited ways. Um, due to Proposition 13, which passed 40 years ago, a town can, can bring in money. And again, uh, I think grant writing is something that, of course, has been done over the last years. Um, I don't think really you've, we've really looked under every rock or crevice for serious grant money. Um, as many people know, perhaps the next governor um, of California will be our neighbor, Gavin Newsom, who lives in Ross. Um, he is very uh, committed uh, uh, to, to, our, to our area, um, knows it very well growing up here. Um, I would be working with him and his staff on a state level as well as um, county and federal level to bring in grant monies to increase our revenues. Um, there's a, a lot of areas to improve and I think, uh, you know, again, I commend people who, have, who sit on boards and commissions here. Um, we're a stable economy but there's, there's plenty of room for opportunity and growth. Thank you, John. Hi, I think the, the town of San Anselmo's budget, I think is in quite good shape now for a number of reasons. Um, part of it is we did uh, successfully pass Measure D uh, several years ago that I mentioned. A number of us were involved in, in doing that. That's brought in a lot of money for our roads. Um, we've had pension reforms that uh, have been mentioned earlier that has, I think, contributed significantly to that. Uh, the town has run a pretty tight ship uh, for the last 15 or 20 years. A lot of cutbacks were required, you know, 10 or 15 years ago, and uh, we're still building back staff very slowly. We've also had great community support for particular aspects of what we do in the town, uh, notably our library. We have a, uh, a library tax and a fantastic uh, existing library that is, I think, very well used and very well appreciated. Um, we're not, I'm not foreseeing from where I sit any, any major financial challenges in terms of, of the, the kind of ongoing operation of the town. I think where we have our challenges is going to be, you know, how do we fund the infrastructure improvements that are going to be needed, um, I primarily parks, uh, public buildings that are deteriorating. We have uh, a couple of master plans. We, you know, we know what to do. The question is where you find the money. I, I'd love to think that money would come from grants. I think uh, realistically that's not very likely because we're just a, a wealthy town in Marin and that's not where grants tend to go for municipal purposes. But uh, we, when, when we, te we tend to do a pretty good job on grants right now and have actually gotten quite a few for both uh, parks and other, other purposes. Thank you. Uh, Steve. Yeah, I think financially the town is in a very good spot relative to many of the other localities in, in California. I think the town council and town staff and finance department have done a great job of being good fiscal stewards and managing the budget. Certainly um, there was the passage of Measure D. There was the consolidation into the Central Marin Police Authority. Those were great cost measures that got us funds to do our roads and saved us funds to, to put into roads and infrastructure and stuff like that. One of the things that I'd like to really point out here um, 
is uh, there, there was a project in San Anselmo. It came through the Parks and Recreation Commission. And while our recreation programs are exploding and a great source of revenue for the community, um, community members came to us a few years ago and wanted to build a skate park in our community. This was a need and a want from a lot of um, parents, children, and, and young families. They wanted a safe place for their kids to skateboard and to scoot where one didn't exist. Um, they came to us and they said, hey, we want to do this. Um, and the next words out, and out of their mouth were not, and you guys got to pay for it. They collaboratively raised the money and worked with the town to implement this skate park that virtually cost the town nothing but staff labor. This is a great model for how local governments, particularly smaller local governments like San Anselmo, will thrive into the future and I was very proud to be a, a part of that process. Thank you. Thank you. Brian. So I'll reiterate uh, what other folks have said. I think that the town is in pretty good fiscal shape. Uh, I was the only person at the budget meeting that was not a member of council or staff during the summer. Um, and I think that actually shows the, what the, the challenge that the town has going forward is, how do you engage the residents of town, particularly young families, in understanding the fiscal history, present, and challenges? Because we will continue to face challenges, either micro or macro. In order to successfully address them, you have to have the citizens understand what's going on and a measure of legitimacy around the decision-making process. And I think that I'm deeply in touch with, with that community in addition to other stakeholders. And one of the things that I'm able to do is translate what's going on at the council level back to the community and then help with that feedback and lead us to not necessarily consensus, but to a decision that, that has legitimacy and that people continue to move forward. Because as we do, we will continue to face um, economic and, and fiscal challenges related to the budgets, which I think we can successfully do. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. San Anselmo has a very tight budget. Every time we have budget hearings, everybody is very tight in what they can and can't do. We have some incredible people who write grants and have saved us lots of money. And we anticipate receiving money from uh, SB1, which is two, about 250000 for roads and structures. That, that money is coming to us. But we've saved money in the, in the pension analysis, in the tiered, in the tiered um, section of, of pension. We've consolidated services with other cities. We've hammered out agreements with our sanitary district, clean energy, uh, municipal water district. People don't really understand what goes on in the budget, but they know it's there. And we have the most incredible thing is that we have a new website coming up uh, which will be very uh, available for civic engagement. It will allow the public to take a look at things and give us feedback, and we're very excited about that. Uh, it's an online, it's sort of an online town hall. You can come and ask questions and look. So I participated in the, in the establishment of this and setting up of, of our new website, and I'm very excited about it. So it will be open for discussion and open for view. So come on by. Thanks. Thank you. Um, and we have uh, one last question. And I'd like to ask you if you could name uh, what you think was a wise decision that has been recently been made by the San Anselmo Town Council, and also one in, w one in which you think was not so wise. Uh, and we'll start with John Wright. OK, well, I think a, w a wise decision um, and that comes to my mind is I think we uh, we selected a really great new town manager, uh, Dave Donnery, um, who had been our recreation director for many years and had had many years of experience in San Rafael. Um, we've had a, a seamless transition from a long time town manager, Debbie Stutzman, to Dave. And uh, having viewed uh, agency staff for many years, including when I was on the school district, uh, it's so important to have great staff. I, I totally agree with Kay, we have wonderful staff. So I think a a very wise decision recently was, was just that. Um, I would say that in retrospect, an unwise decision considering what happened was that I, I, I regret some of the things that happened a couple of years ago on the Memorial Park Detention Basin. Um, I think we underestimated the degree of, of um, opposition to that. Um, some of that was, I think, uh, a little bit over the top, but I, I'm, I'm sorry in retrospect that we had that uh, 
that rather uh, negative experience a couple of years ago. I think much of that is behind us, although I think there's a few lingering animosities out there. Um, and so I, I would put those two things in the, in the wise and unwise category. Thank you. Steve Birdo? In terms of a good decision, um, uh, I'm going to have to cheat and give two here because I totally <laughs> agree with John that the hiring of Dave Donnery was an absolutely phenomenal decision. He is San Anselmo, and we're in a great position to have a town manager as, uh, as him. Um, another great decision that I applaud the town council for was their support of the Memorial Park Skate Plaza project. Um, we certainly could not have done that without their support and they were early supporters of that project as well. So I think that was a great um, amenity to provide for our community that gives our kids a safe place to, to express themselves and to skate and to scoot and, and for children of all ages. In, in terms of um, a bad decision, I'll group it into kind of, you know, one thing because it's individual situations, but I think there have been some individual property rights issues that have come before the council over recent years that um, I think they generally do a very good job at addressing these issues and being empathetic um, to, to the property owners and the interests, but I think there are some recent ones that have come down on the wrong side. Um, aside from that, I think our town council does a pretty good job. Thank you. Brian Colbert? Yeah, so uh, I too uh, applaud the hiring of Dave Donnery, so I'll just say um, that's an excellent decision. But I'll move quickly on to something that I sort of touched on before, which is the town's support of the partnership with the Marin Small Business Development Corporation. Because I, I think that ties together a lot of the themes that all the candidates have discussed today. Economic vitality, uh, creating a strong business framework, uh, figuring out what we do um, and how to measure it. And I think for that, that small amount of investment will pay huge dividends for those merchants that have come to decide it and participate. So I think that was a really strong decision that will, uh, will resonate widely. Uh, as an entrepreneur and the leader of organizations, I always have difficulty sort of saying what is a wise or unwise decision. Because it's very hard to know exactly what the, what the facts were. You know, were you operating in sort of a fog? And is it always possible to iterate and learn? So the one thing I, I would say that I would sort of say, hmm, I bet council might rethink that, is simply bringing the budget to pass in the middle of the summer. Um, and the budget discussion is leaning at 9.39 at night. Um, and I know that council members were frustrated by the, the lower turnout themselves. And I, I think, is there another way to engage the budget on perhaps the most important Important thing that the council does. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. It's difficult for me to classify it as good and bad. Uh, so I'll put the difficult part first. The difficulty for me over these past years was the Memorial Park decision and, um, and how I felt that the information didn't really get out as to the benefits that could have happened there. But you know, you just pick it up and you go on. And so now we're creating the, uh, an incredible, something good that's coming out of that is that we're in credit and, and creating an incredible new park that's going to have applications and places for each person to be. And then the, the thing that nobody has really talked about here that I'm proudest of are the elements that have brought the community together in San Anselmo. We've had very successful Friday nights, picnics on the plaza, the Beatles concert in the park, the Creekside Q, the, uh, all of these events that we have done in San Anselmo that bring the community together, bring those families out, bring the babies out in the carriers, and, and people of all ages who enjoy what we do, and the, the Country Fair Day that's coming up tomorrow. It's all part of the community. It's what we are and what we do. Thank you. Thank you. Tom King. Uh, thank you. Um, well, I, th I think a, a great decision was the consolidation that we spoke of earlier with the fire department. I think that was, I think that's just makes a lot of sense. I think everyone supports it. I think the worst decision, I don't know if it was a decision uh, so much, but um, what could certainly be improved is the fact that we do not have term limits. Term limits are critical. 
In the last election, 2016, there were 41 ballot measures across this country involving term limits. All 41 passed, 100% success rate. In 2014, 97% success rate. The public want term limits. That's critical. It's critical for my campaign. Uh, I believe in one term only term limits, no possibility of re-election. Um, I also believe, and I'll, 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 add, I'll chime in with, with Steve here in terms of uh, cheating a bit and getting another, another poor decision, is that it should be a paid position. <clears throat> You're leaving out 70 to 80 percent of the population, and we are not just public servants. We are mainly public representatives. We represent the public and not just a small minority of them. Thank you. $300 a month. <laughs> in, in Guatemala, it would be okay, I think. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, before we have the closing statements, I have some information about voting. Um, the election day is Tuesday, November 7th. The last day to register to vote is October 23rd, uh, or to re-register re if you've changed your address or changed your name. Uh, requests for vote by mail ballots must be re must be received by the elections department by November 1st, uh, one week before the election. Uh, the polls open in room 121 of the Civic Center on October 20 on, on October 9th. That's October 9th, 29 days before the election. On election day, you may deliver your voted ballot to any polling place in the county, including the Civic Center Room 121. You may also mail your vote by mail ballot on election day, and it will be counted if it has been received within three days. And now we'll have the candidates to make their closing statements of one minute in reverse alphabetical order, starting with John Wright. Thanks very much. It's rare that W gets to go first. Um, I, I really appreciate being here. Uh, I think you heard from my remarks that um, I'm, I'm a candidate with a considerable amount of experience, um, a lot of uh, work in the community for really over two decades. And I'm very, I, I retired from my main job in June, so I have more time to be even more engaged in uh, doing work for the community. Um, I have, there's a lot of issues I'm interested in. Um, I, tr I try to pick issues where I feel I can make a difference and be effective. Uh, that's been historically my, um, my, my success. Uh, I was able to get a park belt at, behind Red Hill. Uh, a community honored me by naming it after me. So that's a, if I die tomorrow, at least I'll have that. Um, mm -hmm. But I would uh, very much like to continue serving the community of San Anselmo, which I think I've done effectively for uh, almost 25 years now. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Tom King. Uh, well, first of all, thank you for inviting me. It's been an honor. Everyone here is terrific. And it's been a very clean, honest campaign, and it will, it will, it will continue that way th uh, through and past the election. Um, I am the founder and president of the only charity ever to offer donors a money-back guarantee. There's been about 20 million charities, so this is quite unique. I mention that because I think I bring a great sense of balance to this job. Um, I, have a pub, I have a private sector focus on accountability and results, and a public service sector nonprofit um, uh, uh, emphasis on, on uh, empathy. So I think that's a great balance, and I've got great grant writing skills. I think it'll benefit the town tremendously. Um, uh, it's, I look forward to you know, hearing from you. I don't know, are we able to mention the website at this site? Sure. Okay. Didn't, didn't know the rules there, but it's, uh, my website is TomKing2017.com. Now, I mentioned that not just to promote me, but I have about 81 specific ideas. I'm really big on resonating with the voters, and I, I see the stop sign. Thank, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Kay Coleman. Well, we have work to do and we have to do it together. Mitigating flood will come, flooding will come piece by piece, but it affects all of Ross Valley. We have to begin. I'm looking forward to increasing civic engagement through our new website, for which I was a tester, and our surveys, and more importantly, the strategic planning that we began in 2012. We have adopted a protect our assets plan for our streets and roadways and pledged to make it safe for our kids and bicyclists and make their way through town. So without reserve, I say I've played a significant role in all this and I'm proud of my work and I want to continue it. Kay Coleman for council.com. Thank you. 
Thank you. Brian Colbert. Yeah, hi. I'm neither an incumbent nor am I a longtime political operative. I'm an entrepreneur with an entrepreneurial spirit. And I've got a daughter in second grade, and I want to bring the voice of young families to the council, which is, I think is essential for our future and to addressing our current issues. I care deeply about the community, and I believe I can bridge and connect a broad degree of stakeholders. And my experience in the private sector, nonprofit sector, and travels abroad position me uniquely to sort of connect, translate, and lead. Thank you very much. Thank you. Steve Berto. Every day we wake up and we put on our superhero capes and masks and we try to go about life as best we can. And every single day we intersect with local government, whether it's the pothole on the road, the flashing stoplight, or the city bus that take that's 15 minutes late. Um, people want to know that local government has their back and that's why I'm running for office. I want to have your back. I bring over a decade of public service in San Anselmo uh, and I have a commitment to keeping San Anselmo vibrant, family friendly and safe. I'm building a coalition, a coalition that includes the Marin Professional Firefighters, the Marin Democratic Party, the Sierra Club, the Marin Women's Political Action Committee, SEIU 10 to 1, which is our town employees, and the Marin County Young Dems, Supervisor Katie Rice, Council Members Tom McInerney and Ford Green, former Council Members Carla Overberger and Doug Kelly. We are building a coalition to address the future issues of San Anselmo and plot the path forward for San Anselmo. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, thank you to all of you candidates for participating in the uh, debate. We thank very you. much appreciate it. Our timekeeper, uh, Ann Laser, thank you. And thank you to the Community Media Center of Marin, and especially to you, the voters, for watching. Thank you.